One half parsec. On screen. Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and this is episode number 80. Joining me this week, we have Amy. Hello. We have Stuart. I'm not dead yet. Yet. Unfortunately. It's okay, I'll find another bus this week somewhere. And we have... And we have Eugene. Hello. So, this week... We have The Orphan Black Season Return, Season 4, Episode 1, they're back. We have the Supergirl finale, and I also want to torment Stuart a little with some Star Wars script leaks, but that's later on, and we don't actually know if they are or not. Just want to clarify, pure speculation whether those are actually real. Yeah, yeah, I I do want to be 100% clear, we don't know if they're real or not, but... If they are real, shenanigans afoot. Um, so, anyway, let's start off with the Or- Orphan Black re- season return. Almost said season finale. That would have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that was a while ago now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, those who haven't been keeping up with Orphan Black, it's effectively a show about the most insanely convoluted conspiracy in the history of conspiracies. Um... <laughs> But at the same time, it's pretty awesome. So I really enjoy it. And as soon as I didn't actually realize it was coming back because Stuart didn't tell me, the news guy failed again. I did not. (laughs) Waiting for a smart-ass comeback? Got nothing. Uh, Anyway, so yeah, it came back. And when it started up, it took me a little bit. But I realized that they'd actually done a massive, massive time skip. Episode 1 of Season 4 is effectively yeah, a prequel. Huge... Yeah. It was really... It kind of caught me off guard, to be honest. Exactly. Um... Sorry, I thought I heard something. Um... Yeah. Yeah, it did. It just sort of... I was like, what the hell? And then, yeah, as soon as I realized what was going on, I was like, oh, this takes place before... Shenanigans. Introduce another new clone. Um, we are now at about, what, 1912 clones, give or take, to try and keep track of? Yeah, I've lost count at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sort of a case of who's alive, who's dead. So he was talking about, um, they were talking to Kashima, and I was like, wait, didn't she die or something? Why are they talking to her? What the hell? Yeah, that's sort of a me losing track more than anything else. But at the very end of that episode, we we it skips back forward to modern times. So, yeah. And random mask girl turns up again. Do we know who that is yet, or...? Oh, it's, it's obviously a clone. We, I think that was I her... Which, s- I meant clone. What? I meant whose clone. Oh, it's one of the girl's clones. Hmm. Sure. Uh, I don't know. It's just to me, like every time I hear clones, it's just bad memories. Oh, I don't blame you. Or yeah. sixty six still still gives me headaches. Yeah. What were the first sixty five <laughs> orders? We will never know. Order one. If I if it was me, order one would be bring me pizza. Stormtrooper. No, no, I think order was, one. I think that was the... Stormtrooper. I think that was the coffee. I think that was coffee. <laughs> Just rock up. It's like a line of stormtroopers out the. <laughs> Instead of saying Order sixty six, he presses the button, and a ton of the stormtroopers hear Order six instead. And Order six is pizza. So he gets back to his office, and there is just a line of stormtroopers off to the fucking horizon. 
just with pizza. <laughs> it's like, it's like, well, shit, something right here. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so it was overall a good episode. I enjoyed it. It definitely set up this season, which is something I needed to do because last season it was getting a little clusterfucky. Like a better way of putting it, it was just starting to get very full on, very everyone in all these different areas and all sorts of shenanigans happening. So, yeah. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's definitely worth a watch. Orphan Black is still one of the most highly rated sci-fi series on TV at the moment. So, mm-hmm. way to go, UK! You're finally producing better sci-fi. Maybe one day you'll be able to make a sci-fi as good as Doctor Who. Wait. Oh, I was... oh. <laughs> I was about to say, where's the Doctor Who go- Where's the Doctor Who coming? Where's the Doctor Who coming? <laughs> Speaking of Doctor Who, I know we're not going to talk about this, but I'm going to bring this up now. We have a new companion. Um, oh yeah. Um. So. I thought they weren't doing it until the end of the year. Um. Well, they announced they it. Still did... Oh, what, yeah, they announced three or four days ago. Yeah. yeah. That sort of blew up big time as well. Oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, the actor's name. Uh, the actress. Is it? Pearl Mackey? Am I getting that right? Probably not. Right. I'm just trying to go. But you... I'm just going through the channel looking for the name. Yeah. I know I'm... her character name is Bill. Yeah, I was just gonna say I'm just gonna call them Bruce. Her name is Bruce Bruce, oh, no, and she right. plays it's, Bruce. It, I, was, I was actually right. It's, um, the actress is Pearl Mackey, and her character name is Bill. Excellent. That's so British. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is that is undeniably British. Oh yeah, and so. Another well, non- I, I gotta say, yeah. From what I've seen, kind of, kind of like the sass on her, to be honest. Oh yeah, we've been missing sass. Like Clara had sass to begin with, but went from sass to smartassery and sarcasm um, fairly quickly. So I'm kind of hoping that she stays Donna level sass. That would be awesome. We need another Donna. What you gonna call him Space Boy? Yeah. So, we do need another Donna. So, um, we won't get to see them until Christmas. Yeah. See how uh, see how they interact on screen together. Hopefully it goes well. Well, yeah. obviously. Obviously, they, they, they've... The teaser trailer they released, they went... They were really, really good together. So, yeah. yeah. There's so, so much if stuff that, happened this week. It's hard for me to keep track of all of the awesome. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that came out. <laughs> we got the Independence Day trailer. Another one. Which... We won't break down just now. I just want to mention it really quickly. Um, to me, I actually walked away from that trailer more on the eh, boat than when I walked into it. So I've shifted away from this could potentially be, be good back towards my original position of... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it won't be Ghostbusters bad. Oh, it, it can't be Ghostbusters <laughs> bad. Go- Ghostbusters is this year's Pixels. Just saying. So what's going to be this year's Fantastic Four, then? Oh, God. Uh, Batman vs. Superman? (laughs) Ow. Batman vs. Superman wasn't too bad. No, Batman vs. Superman was good. I'm just just messing. Um, Honestly... It's actually hilarious. It could be be Independence Day, too. Oh, that would say. kill the franchise if that happened. Oh yeah, that wouldn't. That wouldn't. There would no be coming back from that. Oh, did you hear the room? Speaking of Fantastic Four, did you hear the uh, Marvels dropped in humans? Yeah. And word on the grapevine, which is probably bullshit because Fox <laughs> will never give them up, not in a million years, is there might be a Marvel Cinematic Universe Fantastic Four movie coming instead. I heard it was going to be X Men. So, how can you drop the uh, Inhumans? Um, the Inhumans movie. There was an Inhumans movie planned after Infinity War, and mm. um, I think because there's such a heavy focus on Inhumans in the Agents of Shield series, they've sort of gone, we can't really do both, and the logical I conclusion is to, to lose the movie. I think they should just change the title of it to Inhumans with the Agents of Shield. <laughs> You're you're assuming the Agents of Shield will last another five years. Good luck with that. Their series finale should take place during Infinity Wars. That should be where it ends. 
sad. Anyway. Um, oh, man. Supergirl finale was a cu- couple of weeks ago now. We were so mm. busy last week, we totally forgot about it. Um, yeah, that wasn't that good. Surprisingly, yes. Oh, yeah. So, definitely looking forward to the next... Um, the next season of that. Assuming it gets a next season. I haven't heard if yeah, they are we, or not. I haven't heard if CBS picked it, re-picked it up yet or not. So, I've heard both ways, so I'm sort of on the fence. But yeah, it definitely finished strong. Like, there was moments in the middle C- where it was little... Sort of, doesn't yeah. CW pick it up? Yeah. CW, do the right thing. You know you, you know you do. You know you will. Um, well, worst case scenario, we'll see a Supergirl crossover with Flash again. Because could you imagine a... Supergirl rocks up in Flash's universe, and Arrow's just How like... How would she get there? Reasons! I don't know. Just reasons. It's, it's, it's their choice to she make him... She can't time travel. Yeah. Well, maybe when he when she threw Flash back, she created a micro-portal dealy thingy that evil bad guy Lex Luthor rip off turns into a thingamajig, which wibbly wobbly is the timey wimey, and then she's in the Flash universe. <laughs> there, oh, no. a MacGuffin, the MacGuffin, to create a MacGuffin that got the MacGuffin to happen. Damn it! The point is, or maybe, Fla- or maybe Flash does another portal and accidentally sucks her through. Yeah, that too. <laughs> the, the point is, she gets to the Arrow Flash universe and go and tries to take on Damian Dark. She is weak against magic. Oh, God. That would be hilarious. That won't end well for her. No, it no, really won't. end badly for her. Oh, yeah, it's no, really it will. No, it will. It will end really badly. No, it will it? end badly because Crypt- Kryptonian's two weaknesses are Kryptonite and magic. Yeah, that was what I just said. <laughs> Still bummed we didn't get a, look, a, a Superman look. Yeah. Um, I understand why they did it. They don't want to focus as soon as because as soon as they show them, everyone will be like, <gasps> pretty much, yeah. And it'll take the focus away from the show. Yeah. So, um, then we've got uh, no Arrow this week, which is disappointing. But the Flash. Oh, this week's oh, episode Arrow of the Flash was awesome. Week. No, 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 last week, Arrow? last week, last week. Okay. Yeah, the Flash. Oh, the Flash. Yeah. No more hiatuses for anything. There's, there's literally no more hi- hiatuses for anything, so everything's back to normal at last. Yeah, for the, like the last two episodes. <laughs> I honestly don't think it counts when it's only the last two episodes. But anyway, so Flash has lost his speed. How long until he gets it back? Oh, it'll be, it'll be this week. Yeah. Three weeks. No, it'll be this week because he has to have it back as he goes and visits Oliver at the tomb. So. But we don't. He used his speed to get there. But he He's uses it to leave. Car. He can't drive. He doesn't have a license. He takes pu- he used to take public transport everywhere. Yeah. That's why he was always late. And now his excuse is because he never knows what time it is? Exactly. Time dilation at speed. Woo! Fastest man alive and he's still late. Oh, Barry. Only Barry. Oh, yeah. And Wally. Any speed stuff. I'm liking what they've been doing with Wally. Really liking what they've been doing with Wally. Oh yeah. I like the actor. I, I last last week with the, the um, I'm gonna go into Flash spoilers. Sorry for anyone who hasn't watched it. But that's that the whole Wally moving in with Joe just kind of almost it almost made me tear. Like I I got goosebumps. It's the only reason you got goosebumps is because you've been spending way too much time with your fiance at your place. She hasn't moved in yet. See, that's why you got all teary. It's like, oh, Wally's moving in with Joe. Just like, yay, Jody. <laughs> How long do you think before we start ripping each other's heads off? Oh, about eleven seconds. I can see <laughs> I, the first podcast after she moves in. About five minutes into it, I could. I'm just waiting for... Stuart! Do you want your Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops? I don't know. Hell no. Big Bang Theory reference. <laughs> Howard! Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to have to convince Jodie to call you Howard from now on. <laughs> okay, let's get back on topic. 
Oh, a topic? But topics are boring. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, throwing sword up is more fun. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, mm. let's move on to my fan theory based on script leaks. Now, for the record, the script leaks may be true, they may not be true. This is a major spoiler, potential spoiler warning. So, I just want to throw that out there. Don't come crying to me afterwards. You have been warned. If anyone on this podcast call wants to drop out, I will add you back in after we finish talking about it. Stuart, you don't have a say in the matter. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my episode ain't being ruined. I hate that I, hate that I have to read potential script leaks. <laughs> so, anyway, the... the the premise is fairly simple, and we're not actually going to quote the movie, but we're just going to the, the, the we're just going to do the rough premise because we're going to try and keep it as relatively spoiler free as possible. Um, it's, it's, it's just not easy. Um, so no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the premise is the the chosen one. Anakin Skywalker wasn't the first chosen one. He is part of a cycle of chosen ones that appear every time. The Force feels it's necessary to have a Chosen One. And that is one of the main characters in the movie's backstory. That's why that character doesn't have, like, much in the way of a family or anything mentioned. Just say it. Okay, fine, it's Ray. <laughs> so, because Ray doesn't... It's, 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 it's stated that Ray has a mum but no dad because he's a child of the Force... And Anakin was the last child of the Force, and before then, they were others dating back millennia. Um, is one of the things that's sort of revealed in Episode Eight, supposedly, which I'm relatively okay with. But it raises a question, a really interesting question: Does that make her the Avatar? No. <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. Between uh, between the age of Aang and um Cora, 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 yeah, I was gonna say Katara, but that's definitely not right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's her mum. I know, grandma. No, no, that's that's Aang's Six wife. Grandma. That's Aang's wife. No, I just remember if it was Cora's grandma or mum. I think it's grandma on the show. I haven't watched it in a while, so. Yeah. No, that's not. Cora isn't related to Aang at all. Which is really funny to it's think about. Other, it's the other airbenders that are related to Katara because they're she is the the matriarch of the only airbenders for like. Two I saw or three she seasons. refers to as grandma or something. Yeah, she's referred to as grandma by the kids, not by Korra. Oh. So anyway, um, point being, in Avatar, every generation a new Avatar is born, and that Avatar links the spirit world, aka the Force, to the real world. Now, in the time skip between Aang and Korra, the world's technology leaps forward a lot. Now, if we set Avatar a long, 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 long time ago, because we do see 10, 000, every 10,000 years there's a cycle of energies on the planet that wibbly wobbly timey wimey at. Um, if we set it, say, 100,000 years ago, or even a million years ago, and have a million years worth of Avatar cycles, eventually would reach the point where they're no longer using elements. Because the benders can bend energy as well, eventually they would reach the point where they can just bend the energy, aka the force. Therefore, force users. Ha ha. I'm getting there. Uh, 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 no, no, I'm going to stop you right here. Are you saying Jedi and Sith are ab- uh, uh, benders? Yes. Blood benders. Blood the You've got force choke, blood if bending, you, if force you lightning, see, fire bending. If you could see me right now, I'd be face palming. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. You would be, be all of the face palms. I'm well aware. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. We, hey, we've covered a lot of crazy fan theory BS on this show. It's about time we came up with one, okay? And I'm well aware it's not true. I'm well aware it's crap. I'm well aware the threads I've tied together are effectively not existent. But hear me out. So, anyway, after a million years of Avatar cycles, the, the Avatar is no longer known as the Avatar because they've reached galactic sort of standards across the whole galaxy. The, 
the um the convergence now affects the galaxy not just the the planet that they're on um the spirits are scattered across the galaxy aka the force and all that sort of stuff so moving on to why they're benders you've got airbenders you've got force push force pull stuff like that could be viewed as manipulating the air or potentially manipulating the 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 blood blood bending um you've got the the sith side abilities which could very easily be fire bending come on force lightning fire bending you know it is <laughs> i think i i, I think i made stuart kill himself he's, he's gone not yet <laughs> I must find you and kill you first. Then I shall. Then I can die. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, so that just means that Anakin was an avatar, and Ray is the newest avatar. The question remains, and this is the most important question of all: What element were they from? Now I. Th- would put Anakin as an earthbender because he was born on a sand planet and following the the logical cycles the next the one that comes after earth is fire which would make Rey a firebender here's a question since when has um been avatar logic what eh since, since Even when I got has since when is Star Wars and um, Avatar logic? Ah, see, she's, she, she, she's, she's making a point for me. She's saying that because both are incredibly illogical, they must be the same. I like it. No. Good, good, good work, Amy. Good work. <laughs> uh, I'm going to step in and be the, the no voice for this. <laughs> <laughs> Reincarnation is unheard of in Star Wars. So it's there's not also canon. there's also it's not canon. I was gonna say there's also the dark avatar. They could reincarnate. There's it's not canon, but it has happened before in the Knights of the Old Republic and the Old Republic games. The Emperor's spirit reincarnates into different people. Hence why Malak was evil and and so and so and so, and so forth. So it's not unheard of. No. That being said, <laughs> this is one of the worst ideas for a Star Wars movie I've ever heard. <laughs> what, mate? What? This, because it removes the importance of the one, or because it ties the th- um, four, five, and six into one, two, and three officially? <laughs> this is just hor- well, they're already tied in officially because Anakin, Darth Vader. Yeah, I know, but. Um, as soon as they say that she is the one, just like Anakin, bam! You can't escape it. One, two, and three is a here, They are the one. My mind straightly goes to, um, Buffy. Matrix. Oh, I thought you were going to say Neo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, so... Well, no, one, the, one... Here's the main and the important reason why this is not real. A couple of weeks ago, J.J. Abrams will, um, did an did, uh, interview... I cannot remember where, but in his words, and I quote, he said, Ray, we have not seen Ray's parents yet. They were not in episode 7, but they are in episode 8. We are going to see Ray's parents. We are going to learn who, what her background is, whether she's... Whether she is a Skywalker, whether she's a Kenobi, or whether she's someone completely new. Didn't they say they that she wasn't a Skywalker? No, 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 no. But see, Stuart, you're forgetting rule number one, and this is the most important rule, and JJ lies a lot. <laughs> God! A lot. <laughs> All Star Trek fans know that well. God! Yeah. So, but yeah. No. Uh, again, from the others, from the other information from the script leak, some of it's plausible. Yeah. Some of it's plausible. Well, one of, one of the points, also, um, one, one of the other points raised yeah, from the script leak the... was that the it's real. Uh, they don't like calling the one the one normally because they're very 
because they're so powerful with the Force, they could turn to the dark side really easily. And Luke's reticent to train her because he doesn't want another Darth Vader because he could be far more powerful she could be far more powerful than Kylo ever dreamed of if she goes dark side. Yeah, dark side's got too much paperwork. Uh, either huh? side's got too much paperwork. But, but it has cookies. Dark side has cookies. I have cookies. Doesn't mean I want to go to the dark side. Giggity. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Stuart, you were saying. I think we killed him. Stuart is dead. Moving right along. <laughs> I'm not dead. <laughs> Damn. One of these days. One of these I'm days. I'm trying to kill Stuart. Well, I've got to get my entertainment Answer value out of him somehow. Answer Stuart, please work. report to the airlock. Answer Stuart, please report to the airlock. <laughs> 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 yeah, you were, you were required you for a home cleaning. He's, he's not an ensign, he's a Jedi Master. That is also an ensign. He's an ensign Jedi Master. <laughs> Jedi Master ensign? What order would that go in? I'm not an ensign. <laughs> Jedis were always generals. Uh, look where that got them. Maybe they should have uh, started hey! at the bottom and worked their way up. Mind you, that in Star Wars, they give out general, the title of general really, really easily. Remember, um, uh, uh, Cal Rizian became a general after being with the Rebels for, like, a day. It's, like, on the Millennium Falcon, and he's like, oh, you're a general now because yeah, you're on the Millennium the Falcon. Reb- it's like, what yeah, the hell? This is the Rebels, though. They want the smartest group. Uh, so... Anyway, Ensign, you were saying? (laughs) (laughs) Next. Yeah, let's move along to the model report. (laughs) Fine, we'll do the model report. Just to catch Eugene off. The question. Well... Today's model report, we're going to get a sneak peek at the upcoming Mobius Models 132nd scale Battlestar Galactica Raptor. Ooh. Uh, yes, it's coming. Uh, U.S. price is either 60 or $70 suggested retail. But it is a big kit. Because it is 135th scale, so it's in scale with the Vipers and Cylon Raiders that have already been released. That thing's going to be The other huge. nice part... Yes. The other nice part is they're also releasing an add-on kit for it, which will feature the weapons pods. Ooh. Uh-huh. That means, but that means I've got to have to buy two. One to put missile pods on and one to not have missile pods on. Ah, why do they do this yep, to me? That is, uh, to get more money out of you. I know. It's a love-hate relationship, that me is, and my wallet. Um, that is due out end of the summer. So watch your local hobby stores or favorite online places for it. Um, I will definitely be getting one in for Perry County Hobbies. Uh, when it comes out. Downside being they're not necessarily that cheap. No, they're not cheap. I say get three in and send two to Bax. <laughs> hey, I accept gifts of any value. I was being sell it to you. Well, it's like I carry it away. Uh, speaking of not cheap, we'll give everybody a... Uh, un- um, what we qualify as this week's laugh app of the day. Out on Amazon, there is somebody that's definitely smoking the good stuff. Oh, no. He, ha- he has the Space 1999 148th scale Eagle listed. Oh, God. Suggested, re- 
the suggested retail on this kit's about $120, $130. Would anybody care to take a guess at how much it's listed for on Amazon? Ooh, ooh, <laughs> pick me, pick me, pick me. Um, okay, we... $1,264.11. You're way too high. Damn. I'm going to go between 250 and 300 You're too low. It's about $400. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, if I sell one of these, I could buy three for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Profit. Is he part, fin is he part Ferengi? He's probably part Ferengi. Money He's part something, Ferengis. all right. Money-grabbing Ferengis. Yes, yeah, so, so I'd like to remind our listeners that there are honest model shops out there, and there are some not-so-honest sellers out there. Yeah. This person that's selling it for four hundred dollars is not so honest. Oh yeah, and if you want an if you're in Australia and you want an honest model shop, check out the One Hundred Fifth Armory. If you're in America and you want an honest model shop, whatever you do, go nowhere near Perry County Hobbies. Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> no, no. In all seriousness, joking aside, go to Perry County Hobbies. It's awesome. I'd fly there and go there, but it's gonna cost way too much for me to even consider doing that. Great, but that's the model <laughs> That's the model report for today. A brought to you by Perry County Hobbies and the open airlock that David's about to be shoved out of. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, mm. All trolling aside, definitely check out Perry County Hobbies. It's really, really good. One of your thumb is pretty good too. If you're in Australia. Mm. Um, so, hmm, let's see. Let's move on to what we expect from Civil War. Because Captain America Civil War comes out in Australia in less than two days. So we will do a special podcast for that probably Thursday night. Um, yeah, because I'm not seeing it till lunchtime Thursday, so... Yeah, and I'm getting my car service, so I won't even be home until probably 3 or 4 o'clock Thursday. I should probably organize tickets. So. <laughs> Good luck with that. I got mine. Yeah, I got my ages ago. Yeah. Well, I should be able to get an Ipswich. Yeah. Let's try. Oh, oh, worst case scenario, I'm planning on going to Sunnybank. It's a the cinema itself is ridiculously expensive, but they don't pre-book tickets, so uh, makes it a bit easier. So. Um, but anyway, so what are we expecting from Civil War? A lot of smart aleck comments from Tony. <laughs> I'm... Okay, rephrase. A lot of smart aleck comments from Spidey. <laughs> what are we looking forward to the most? Spidey! Spidey? It's just... I Just because of, of what I've heard from... Because they had like a... They've had the press... There was a press screening in America. Yeah. Yeah, and I've heard I, good things about it. Like, they didn't go into detail, but they've just said that um, Tom Holland is a really good Spidey. Sweet. So. Well, I've done my best to avoid as much of that as humanly possible. Possibly. So. Oh, there's no, like, me? proper... There's no, like, proper spoiler spoilers out. Yeah. So. Well, I can't, it, it, I can't wait to do that. Saying, it's going to be fun. Yeah. It won't be the spoiler. Yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> Within 24 hours of it being released in Australia, if it's above, in front of the States, we've got a podcast up every time. That's what we do. I think we even did that for Star Wars. I think we even did that for Star Wars. Oh, we did it for pretty much everything. So. But yeah, um, so... Yeah. What, are, what am I looking forward to? Honestly... I'm looking forward to see who wins. I'm looking forward to see if they actually go stuff use and stop fighting each other and fight something bigger. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to watching Black Panther kick ass. I'm curious how much of the movie he uses, though. I, I want to see Ant-Man get caught in Spider-Man's web. 
<laughs> that has to be a thing. I'll be incredibly disappointed if little Ant-Man does not get caught in Spider-Man's web and just be like, what the hell? And then turn big to get out of it. Yeah, I was going to say, he can't exactly get stuck very well. So, we know that he's got, we know that he's going to be Giant-Man for the airport battle, which is going to be cool. So, can't wait for that. Um, I just want to, yeah, I do want to see who wins, but I do hope they go, um, they decide to stop fighting each other and... Well, they still have Baron Vaughn, whatever the hell his name is, to... What's the bad guy's name again, Stuart? Stuart? Yeah, he's still not talking to me. Um, Baron Vaughn, something or other, whose name I can't remember, is the bad guy. And if I remember... And... It's, I think the bad guys are sort of him, and Crossbones is sort of chaotic neutral. He's not necessarily bad, I don't think, in this. Um, but yeah, it's definitely looking forward to it. It's going to be good. So, is still, he the one who started the whole argument in the first place? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Crossbones is technically a bad guy, but he's more mercenary. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how it sort of plays out between the two teams. I'm curious to see what happens with Rhodes and how much of an ass-kicking he gets. Um, we know he's at the very least taken out of commission at the airport battle. Um, yeah. I was meaning the fact is they've gone... The main guy, the main enemy is the one who has decided that they have to pay for their own um, yeah. Or to control who they want when they go out to be controlled. Exactly. I mean, no sense, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know, I know, I know where you're coming from. Uh, Stuart, you there? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Nature calls. Ah. News. Time. Yes. Time and for the news. there is plenty of news. So, uh, the, the just, just this just in. Wolverine is going to be in X-Men Apocalypse. Shock, horror, gasp, moving right along. <laughs> it is Hugh Jackman's Wolverine as well. Well, the cool thing is, is that he has adamantium. Wait, he got it back? Yeah, Weapon X. Or supposed Weapon X. Because if you actually watch the trailer, it sh it shows the claws, but his arm is like all bloody and stuff. And it like it looks like it, um the Weapon X project has happened in the in the new timeline to Wolverine. Huh. So, yeah. No more bones. The adamantium's back, boys. Booyah. Hopefully it looks better. Hopefully it looks like the original X-Men movie adamantium and not X-Men 3 adamantium. Oh, no, no. It, 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 it looks proper adamantium. Yeah, it doesn't look like friggin' fake rubber claws like multiple movies had them looking. They can't no, be fake. No, no, <laughs> No, no, he means the way that they aesthetically look, not actually in the movie. No, no, they, they physically look like plastic in the movie. It's actually funny because none of, because there's, there's a really funny story um, uh, with X-Men 2 with um, Hugh Jackman. It's Did a... you want to stay still long enough? No, no, um, so there was a scene, um, the, the scene where he's running down the hall um, naked. Oh, uh, what what the production what the production team did is when he turned around um like went off turned around um and went off stage they had all the female members of the production team waving one dollars at him. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it gets funnier so he covers his bits forgetting he has his claw his claws on and he almost cuts his balls off. Ow! <laughs> like he cuts his inner thigh. <gasps> almost did a self vasectomy. Oh whoops. Everyone would have been like, "Look at you!" <laughs> like literally, he turns to a corner. And he's like, "Ah!" ah. <laughs> it's like, oh, so he comes like and stops covering very quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that awkward moment when yeah. you when you chop your own majigger off by accident. <laughs> anyway. And then even better, even better. Um, at the end of filming, all the all the actors get like um a a a, a reel of the thing. And it was uh, his bits in bits. 
Well. <laughs> oh, the funny stories on the Graham Norton show. Oh, yeah. So. Anyway, um, we're going to move on to the Power Rangers movie. That's coming oh, out next year. Yes, they released uh, Rita Repulsa. Um, uh, not just that, they also released some behind-the-scenes shots ooh, of um, her, like, in the outfit. Yeah, in the costume. Her, yeah, in her costume and, the, and her staff. Nice. Her staff. There's a very notable, noticeable thing in the staff um, that may tie in a certain Green Ranger. Ooh. I was, was going to say, what, ties in a Sailor Scout? <laughs> no, that would be hilarious. Card, you got to get it right. It's not a sailor scout. It's card captors. Get it right. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what was what, what was worse out of the two of those. <laughs> oh, I'm doing my damnedest to forget both. I guarantee you. The only yeah, reason um, I remember the yeah, card captor one is because it was on before Dragon Ball Z. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I like but card yeah, captors. Um, all right, back to back to Rita. Um, and so the staff is the staff is golden, and in the, in the middle of it is like this green gem. It, al- it almost looks like a green power coin. Ooh, nice. Because the the Ooh. the thinking with all the fans, with nothing's confirmed, is that the outfit that we've seen is sort of meant to be related to the green the green ranger powers and the dragon's Orton and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. So. No, as again, we're only just getting shots. We haven't even seen what the actual Ranger outfits look like yet. Those will be coming very soon. Yeah, I will guarantee you that. Yeah, well, they're they because they're fi- they're filming, filming in, Vancou- in, in Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. So sooner or later, we're going to see the Ranger outfits. Yeah. So, um, speaking of filming in Vancouver, what did I just see that said it was filming in Vancouver soon? Uh, I know Arrow stopped filming in Vancouver. I know uh, they've pa- packed up season four. That's f- no, f- finally yeah, four. They finally, it's four, isn't it? yeah, they finally finished filming. <sighs> now there was some. some heavy days off. Oh, what was it? It's going to annoy me until I remember. Deadpool two. No, no, no. <laughs> it was some. It was some. <sighs> I can't remember. Keep going. I'll think of it later. Yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, Daisy Ridley. I uh, put up a really cool um, little teaser of her doing some stunt training for episode 8. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. It's good. Ooh. It's not... Bikini? It's not bad. It... No. <laughs> no, no. No golden bikini slave layer outfit for Ray. Oh, But that's boring. Don't need her going through that. Come on, did they put Princess Leia through that? Yeah, we don't need another one. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Anyway, so, moving... yeah, uh, so yeah, her, uh, yeah, moving moving off that, um, her, uh, her instru- her stunt trainer is um Liang Yang, he, uh, aka Traitor. Nice. So yeah, he he was one who uh, was doing the stunt training with uh, with uh, John Viagra for episode seven, and he's been helping Ray out for episode eight. She looks like she can kick some ass. I think this is gonna be a really awesome fight scene between her and Kylo. Oh yeah, which we kind of already knew, but like it, lo- she doesn't look as a uh, rustic. So. Oh yeah. Uh, moving on to the f- moving along to the Flash. And, uh, so this week's episode, obviously, we know Barry's lost his speed. Uh, so there's actually a, um, metahuman, uh, actually steal, who actually, uh, kidnaps, um, Harrison Wells, because he thinks it's the Earth-1 version and blames him for the particle accelerator explosion. So Barry, without his speed, has to try and save Earth-2 Wells. Yeah, and that episode is called Back to Normal. Alright, I have a I have a huge spoiler for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Oh god, here we go. So, a couple of months ago, um, it was reported that, um, that Nathan Fillion is, um, is starring in, uh, in it. Yeah. We know who his character is now. The dad? No. No. Oh. That would have been no, awesome. Uh, Nathan, Mal's Nathan son Fillion... is Star-Lord. I could not think of a better father for Star-Lord than Mal. 
<laughs> no, no. Um, uh, Nathan Fillion is going to play Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man. And now I'm going to explain who this is. Uh, in the Marvel Comics universe, uh, Simon Williams was a former member of the Masters of Evil and brother of villain the Green Reaper, who then became good and joined the Avengers. Hello, Avengers tie-ins. Oh yeah. So yeah, I could, I'm looking at a picture of Wonder Man. I could see Fillion pulling it off. Abilities. Um, ionic ability? energy and power. Oh, ability. Flight, yeah. extended lifespan, virtual invulnerability, superhuman strength, speed, agility, and reflexes, enhanced vision and hearing, um, trained electrical engineer, talented actor, capable industrialist, um, experienced stuntman. Well, yeah, I can see Nathan Fillion doing at least one of those. <laughs> he can, he, the Nathan Fillion can, no, no, he could definitely fly. He's a leaf on the breeze. But yeah. Uh, but seriously, looking at a picture of Wonder Man, I could see Fillion pulling that off. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh so yeah, that's gonna be his character in Guardians of the Galaxy Two, so obviously that will that will be another character that'll be head over to for the Infinity War. Yeah. The cool thing actually is, um there with his character there's been um like set shots. Yeah, and and that a portion of Guns of the Galaxy Two is actually going to take place on Earth. Ooh, as interesting. In, yeah, and um, because uh, he starts off as the actor, in the, like he's he's um he as someone realizes he's going to be the actor before he goes with the Guardians, and there's a and there's like a few um p- uh, movie posters. One's like a romantic comedy, ones um. One's like a, a Marvel Comics character called Archon, and then I love the, the, I love this end one, and a Steve Jobs style poster for a biopic about Tony Stark. Hint, hint. Wow. <laughs> wink, wink. Don't judge. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna lo- I'm gonna laugh when those two just get on screen together. Yeah. Well, I heard... Um, Seriously, th- th- those two with Spidey is just going to be hilarious. Speaking of Spidey, did you hear who's been cast in the new Spider-Man movie? Yes, Robert Downey Jr. is, is going to be in it. Oh, yes. Now, I've five bucks says he plays a really I small am Spider. role. I am Spider! I reckon he's going to play a really small role in it. Like, almost a Sorry, mentor children. for like two or three scenes. I, that's why I'm thinking, I am Spider. <laughs> oh, God. It so depends. Like the... I just find it amusing that they call it Homecoming, and it's almost like, look, see, guys, Spider-Man, it came back to us. After being all Marvelified, it came back, and it's good now. you got to watch it, right? And everyone's just well, going to be like... Home... Eh. Well, the idea of Homecoming is that he's in high school, so... Yeah. So, so it, it ties... Yeah, that's what it's tying into with with high school. Yeah. Even still. So, yeah. Uh, this is uh, interesting. Uh, uh, and, again, potential spoilers for episode 8, which I didn't report on last week. Uh, Prince William of Prince Harry actually visited um, Pinewood Studios um, and went on set for a Star Wars episode 8. Let's throw the royalty uh, in it. Yeah, it's just, just, just... Did they, by any chance, get eaten by a... By a brass tar? No. Oh. No, no. no but I was gonna say. I was gonna say oh, Rancor. Yeah, no, no. But there's pictures of them in A wings. Ah. I saw pictures of the... them in Stormtrooper gear. Yeah. Yes. And that's what the story is. Is that they're gonna have Stormtrooper cameo? Is that actually gonna be in episode eight of Stormtroopers? Oh, okay. I guess there is a but plus yeah, side to being royals after all. So yeah, and um, so. <laughs> So yeah, and uh, as I said, they showed A wings. So I was like, "Wait!" And when I, because I saw it on the news, and I was like, "That's an A wing, cock. That's an A wing." Like I was shocked. I'm like, "That's a spoiler. That's a pretty big spoiler that they just dropped on TV." Yeah. Obviously, but, they have. To, obviously, they got permission to show that. I was. Yeah. But... yeah but to be perfectly honest, an A wing is just a ship. It's not necessarily a spoiler. Like, Oh my well, god, we Star Wars has many... spaceships in it! <gasps> we 
we weren't sure sure how many sh- ships from the original trilogy were going to come back. So yeah. it's nice to see that. And I've always liked the A-Wing. It's always been an underrated ship. Yeah. So you for s- me, it's just a personal happiness. You see, um, just on the note of Episode Eight, one of the other uh, fan things that's floating about was there's a picture of the shuttle that left Ray behind. Have you seen that? Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the costumes. Oh, we'll get to that. There's oh, the you mean the one how it's compa- you mean no, you mean the one how it's comparing it to the to the non-canon shuttle Lucas? Yeah. Different design. Yeah, slightly different design. Again, it's... could be plausible. Yeah. Well, I, I like it. It says there is some, the there is thing. there is some truth in legends. Is sort of the quote that they're playing off. Yeah. So, well, I love um my favorite thing to come out of it is the concept art from Ray's and Luke's character in Episode Eight, and I love the costume, and I hope they use this costume for Luke, where it's um it's his he's got his black gear on again, like like the Episode Six gear, but he's got like a like a, you know, like how Captain Phasma had that cape that would like draped over his shoulder. Yeah. Similar thing with that for Luke. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, that that could work. And then with Ray, uh, she's lost her she's lost the jacket, and it's and it's just sort of reminisce. It sort of looks back at um, her, her outfit on Jakku. Yeah. So more Skywalker looking again. Fair I really want that Luke outfit because if that actually pops up in the movie, I'm so gonna bust out a cosplay of that. <laughs> hey, look! I'm the male version of Ray, Luke. No, the male version of Ray. You mean Luke? Shut up! I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> they have the uh, first. I since that's the There's been so many, so many Rays and Kylos and Poes. Hardly any Finns. No one cares for Finn apparently. No, oh, poor Finn. But, um, one of the things that I saw was oh, was these kids were playing. That's right. The kids were playing out the front in my complex. And one of the kids screams out, I'm Kylo Ren! And the, the two other kids that were playing with him, like, Kylo Ren's boring. We're going home and left him. And he goes, you can't leave me! I'm Kylo Ren! I thought, wow, that is the most Kylo Ren that's, thing that's, I've ever heard. What the hell? <laughs> that, that, that is full-on Ben chucking a tanty tantrum. <laughs> I'm like, wow. He's really taken the Kylo Ren character to heart. That's irony. <laughs> So, uh, Game of Thrones came back yesterday. Hey, oh, cute. Yeah. Haven't watched it yet. Watching it today. Oh, there's a big thing at the Let's end. Let's see who but... you're going to kill off today. Yeah. They kill about nine people in the first episode. I actually counted. <laughs> that doesn't actually surprise me. But yeah, we're actually looking for <laughs> no, the fandom the... to do a, um, a versus battle. And I was like, I got the perfect one. Frodo with Sting versus... Anya Stark with her little pokey stabby sword. With Needle. Needle, that's it, Needle. I can't remember what it's called. So Sting versus Needle. Except, she, except she's blind now, so Frodo would win. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oops. Sorry, sorry for anyone who hasn't watched season 5. But no, season 6, uh, like, the ve- the very last scene. Oh, that sets up some very interesting stuff for the season. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say on it. Fair enough. Yeah, well, look at that. We had so much stuff to cover, and we flew through it, probably fairly incoherently, but I'm whatever. not finished yet. You're not? Uh fine. I guess you've still got five yeah. minutes. Pro- we're going to talk about, we're going to cover Project Discovery. Oh, God. No, don't, oh, God, me. It's done by the guys who are going to do Star Trek Horizon. Oh, that. Yes, yes. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> That's why just, I said don't just, do that. Yes, 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 yes. I, we, I, we actually did want to Pretend cover... Pretend I just slapped you across the back of the head for that. Yeah, I deserve a gib slap. I, 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 I accept the gib slap with humility. Um, yeah, we, we were okay, going I'll to cover... I'll give it to you next time I see you. What? <laughs> I'll give it to you next time I see you. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, we were going to cover what the ramifications of some of the Star Trek Axanar lawsuits are. And how it's bleeding out into the greater fan universe or metaverse or whatever you want to call it. Um, so Eugene actually wanted to 
chime in on this a bit, so I'll let him go first, if he's still floating about. I'm uh, still here. <clears throat> still here. Do you want to chime in on the whole lawsuit going nutso? I just think it's a shame that the way it's being handled by Paramount Pictures, and and it was a, and it was CBS that actually sent the letter to um, Horizons. Um, yeah, Horizons. <clears throat> I think and, I actually I've got to give, sorry to sorry to interrupt but I, I I got to give it to CBS to like to actually tell them and, and like before they started so we didn't have a, a whole repeat of the Axanar thing and yeah. I think that's a kind yeah. of a good thing on their part to do yeah credit where credit's I mean, sad due that... letting them know and saying look guys we we appreciate it we know you guys love this stuff heaps but um we just want to let you know that you could potentially be involved in the sort of get drawn into a larger legal battle that's happening at the moment if you don't sort of back off for a bit. They they still plan on making the second Horizon movie. Um but what they're gonna do they is they're gonna put to it change on a lot of it. No 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 they're putting it on hold for now. Um until the whole lawsuit thing finishes and they finally work out exactly where everything stands and then they'll go from there to whether they'll, they'll make it or not. They'll make sort of the final decision. But they've started a new project, which is up on Kickstarter, which looks fucking spectacular. And deserves oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. everything that you can give them. And some of the, um, some of the stuff that you get for backing is, is really cool. I'm going to quickly go into them. First, if you pledge $600 or more, you get to name a government that is going to be in the movie. Nice. Oh, hang on, I'll be right back. Uh, we may not be here when you come yeah, back. Yeah, we've got... Yeah, <laughs> bloody else do it. Three minutes. Three minutes. Some of the other um, Star Trek fan films that are being hurt by this, Star Trek Continues said that their Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaigns, the donations are way down because of this. Yeah. Because fans are concerned. So, oh, and it would not surprise me if we see the same thing happen with um, Phase 2, with um, you know, Starship Farragut, or a few of these other ones that have been around a long time, and could exactly. end up in the same boat. Exactly. So, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I'm sort of worried about, is what happens... Sort of from here. If it, the lawsuit actually goes heavy. Like... Yeah, well, a few years ago, NBC did the same thing with Battlestar Galactica. It came down on everyone like a bag of hammers because they were bringing out a game and they went through ModDB and they shut down all of the mods. Anyone that could have anything to do with um, the... Anyone that had anything to do with Battlestar Galactica in any way, shape, or form, all of their mods were deleted overnight. And they were... Yeah. So my mod was affected by that. That's one of the reasons I'm on Save Sci-Fi now. But anyway, going back to... I finally made... filled enough to make it to the page. So, $600... Um, you get to name a government. Yeah, I'm back. You're back? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Just got one of my pieces for cosplay oh. arrived. Eight hundred dollars so is gonna... screen used uniform. Yeah, I kind of really want to do one of those. A thousand dollars, you get your name in the film. Yeah, is it? I'm guessing. It, does it mean? Like, I wonder if it means like your real name, or like you get to make a name up that's used in the film. Um. So yeah, you'll be a member. Be cool of, you you'll like be a member to... of Mission Control. Anyway, we've got a minute left, so I'm gonna have to play out through these as quickly as I can. Um, thirteen hundred dollars is your name and face in the film. Fifteen hundred dollars is promote your business. We'll display a business name or logo on our official website for six months. Blah blah blah. Two thousand dollars featured extra. Three thousand dollars featured alien extra. Uh, Four thousand cool. dollars. Yeah, that would be cool. Evening with the cast and crew. Six thousand dollars associated producer. Ten thousand dollars executive producer. And it's done by the That's Star it. Trek Horizon guys, so it's going to be really really good. So check it out, facebook.com slash Star Trek Horizons, or something like that. Um, project, it's Project Discovery, it's going to be really, really good. Check out facebook.com slash 
So sci-fi, facebook.com, so so sci-fi podcast for all of your sci-fi stuff. Check out facebook.com slash deadliest fandoms for your sci-fi verses here. It's kind of, it's, this week's one is the S- uh, Super Star Destroyer versus Enterprise D. It's looking really, really good. Catch you later. Bye. Catch you later. Bye. Catch you later.